Sarah is 97 years old and homeless for the first time in her life. How and why this has happened is bewildering. She's worked hard her whole life and is now understandably stressed and scared. Sarah needs a home. At almost 100 years old, nobody deserves to be homeless. Sleeping on a makeshift bed and living out of a suitcase. I, I need a, a bed who is a very good mat mattress. No, but Sarah Moulet still no puts her son Mama, before bien, herself. I told you before, no, because it's your room that... Sergio has taken his mum in at his tiny one-bedroom unit in the Sydney I suburb of Glee. No, I, I want to, to have my house, my bedroom, no, my bedroom, be my bedroom. To be 97 and yes, homeless, yes. Sarah, yeah. That's terrible. <laughs> ah, terrible because I couldn't pay. <laughs> terrible. I feel powerless. Sarah travelled to South America to visit family in November 2019. Given your age, that trip back home must have been precious. For my family, of course. The most important, no? When COVID hit, Australia's borders closed and Sarah couldn't get back. She had a return ticket on the, I think it was the 8th of April in 2020, and she got stuck because of the COVID. When international travel finally recommenced two years later, Sarah struggled to get a direct flight. There was a flight available through Doha, through the Middle East. That was a 40-hour flight. Um, and it was, I think, $7,000. And she couldn't do it anyway because of the frail age, you know. Stranded overseas, the Australian government cut Sarah's aged pension in half because she'd been out of the country for so long. But they didn't reduce the rent on her community housing unit she'd lived in for almost 20 years. It came to the point where she asked me just, just uh, give them the keys and relinquish the house because she couldn't afford it. She was getting $187 a fortnight. She couldn't even buy the food. I mean, you know, just barely eat. The great-grandmother finally arrived back in Australia in July last year. I pay more than 3,000, 3,000 American dollars. For the last eight months, Sarah's had nowhere to live, left with no choice but to sleep on her son's couch. What did your home mean to you, Sarah? My house was beautiful inside, beautiful. For all the pride she took in her old home, we return with Sarah and Sergio to find nobody living there and the place boarded up. Her neighbour Susan, the only comfort left. <laughs> oh, Mama! Oh, oh, I can't believe you can't come back. How are you? Well, I waved goodbye to you all those years ago and I said I'll see you in six weeks. Yes, you are really forgotten. And look what's happened to your beautiful my, my house blood, now. My blood. I know, it's oh, mama. Yeah, How old are you now? 95? 97. 97? Oh, 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 oh my goodness. Oh, yes. He was the best, most oh, beautiful yes. neighbour. Yes. Oh, and look at what's happened oh, to yes. her beautiful yes. house now. It's all yes. smashed in. Susan says nobody's lived at Sarah's old unit for more than a month. Brand new floor that she paid, I don't know, $3,000 oh, for yeah. it, whatever. Yes. All gone. Yes. All the security mesh and the locks that oh, I put 800 in there. 800 there, the cost of the It yeah. looks terrible now. Can you yeah. believe this is your home? Because you know, she couldn't afford it, she couldn't return to it, and now look at the way it's being treated That's or right. mistreated. And she hasn't got a home anymore. We're told there are multiple vacant units in the Housing Commission block. I mean, people go in jail and get to keep their place. So I don't understand the wait list. Well aware of the housing crisis, Sergio isn't fighting for Sara to be given another place of her own. Instead, he's asking the department to consider their situation and grant them a two-bedroom unit they can share so he can continue to care for his mum. What eats at you the most? That they don't care, you know. They, they act as if they're against you. They, they, they act as if you're an enemy. 
A retired public hospital cleaner, Sarah is used to caring for others. She deserves to live her final years with dignity. A nice house and clean house, no? Yeah. It, that is the, my, my dream. A hard-working immigrant family to Australia many, many years ago and has been totally productive and honest members of society. So she deserves, she deserves what we all want, which is a roof, you know, housing security, food security. It's really appalling. It really is appalling. And Dimity joins me on the desk now. Dim, how can we allow this to happen to a vulnerable old lady? Well, Ali, wait till you hear what the government first came back to us. When we first went to the Department of Communities and Justice, they sent us a statement advising Sarah and her son to consider looking for housing properties outside Sydney's inner west because they would have shorter waiting times. They also suggested Sarah apply for housing herself put her own name on the application because her age would push her up the priority list. OK, I know you, Dim, and I know that you wouldn't have been happy with that. Well, no, I wasn't, because imagine if this was your own loved one. I mean, advice is not what this family needs. This family needs a solution. Sarah deserves to have her own bedroom. She's 97. So we contacted the New South Wales Premier, Dominic Perrottet, and the opposition leader, Chris Minns, who are facing an election in a week's time. The opposition came back to us promising if elected next week, Labor will make Sarah a priority and find her a suitable home. As for the Premier of New South Wales, we never heard back from his office. But we weren't going to let this one go. So I kept calling because homelessness and the cost of living are the two most critical issues we're all facing right now. We need politicians to act, not just talk. Sarah and Sergio have been hitting bureaucratic brick walls since July last year. And a week before an election, after we call, they fix it. Late this afternoon, the Department of Communities and Justice finally saw sense. They called me, Ali, to say that they have found two properties that they are offering to the family and they hope to sign a lease soon. So there you go. I mean, it shouldn't have been this hard, not for anyone. Mm. Look, it should never be that hard. You're absolutely right. But this, this is amazing news. Have you been able to share it with Sarah? I have. I, I rang Sergio this afternoon and they're over the moon. They say that, you know, they wish that they had called us sooner. Mm. Um, they've been through so much. I mean, she's been sleeping on a couch. You know, she was complaining about her backache and it's just wonderful news and it's a great result, but it shouldn't have to happen, Ali. Well done, Tim. Good stuff. Thank, Thank you. you.